I just choose to like always be happy because it's like I said, it's always paid off. And why not? Like you have, you have, it's everyone's choice. Like you can choose to wake up and be sour and be sassy and be like, Mah. or you can choose to be like, let's do this. Like I want to go, you know, let's go. And so like, that's even a lot of my like sayings when it's like, cheers it up. And like, let's do this. It's like, those are my own affirmations of like pumping people up. Hi, my name is Lindsay Zulich, uh, also known as Woodbrain, and I'm a magician. I make magic with my hands. I'm located in sunny Southern California, also known as Torrance. Was born and raised here, and I've lived here my entire life. Here's it up is kind of from, I mean, obviously, like I said, I bartended for many years, and it was kind of just like, I, I love the idea of like, you think, when you're cheersing, it's usually to like a celebratory moment, right? Or if we're just like honoring somebody or whatever it is, it's also the arm raise. So this is a little bit of like energy that's being required. Like your blood flow is being pumped and like cheers it up to me. It's like, it's like my gimmick, I guess. It's like my catchphrase. Like I feel like everybody should have their thing or their mantra. And like, to me, that is my thing. I mean, I love that Southern California in general, we're like two hours from anything. So you could be in the desert, you could be in the snow, you could be at the beach, and even probably less than that, which is like, to me, amazing. So there's like so many adventures. You could be snowboarding in the morning, surfing at night, or vice versa. So we're my good old alma mater, Torrance High, also known as uh, Sunnydale High for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Beverly Hills High for 90210, I don't know what it was called for She's All That, and I don't remember what it was called for Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but. Is there anything that was probably called Ridgemont High? Probably was, that's, yeah, Ridgemont High. This was the front of those schools, and here we are. So my shop, this is like my sanctuary. It's very pristine, it's very like organized, and to me it makes every sense it makes me so happy and the way i treat it is if i were to have a friend that comes over that wants to build and they were like hey where's the tape measure where's it an, like a, like your sanders i'd be like oh it's the top left drawer to the right and like you could literally pull it and be like oh, shoot there's actually four in here and then they're like okay well where's this like your sanding disc okay pull the drawer right above it like to me everything makes sense even the way i like do my content like it should be quick you should be able to knock stuff out and you shouldn't be bogged down because you're literally piling through stuff and like i said if it works for you it works for your shop it worked for my dad you know, and I get rasped about it on my, on my video because people were like, I can't believe you painted those tools. I'm like, well, I still, he had like four or five of that same tool. So I, I still have a couple of those tools. And if you watch the video all the way through, you'd see that. I was raised by my dad and uh, yeah, so I've lived in the same house my entire life, which is kind of unheard of, but I have a lot of like pride and honor in the house that I, that I was raised in because I've done a lot of modifications since living here my entire life. Um, but being raised by a single father, it kind of explains, I think, a lot of my personality and who and the values that I, that I have. My dad was just a very unique individual, loved a lot of tools. Like I inherited this garage from him and it definitely didn't look like this, the tools that I inherited. Um, some of them, the cords were like taped together at the end. He always kind of just made do with certain things. So he was very like a jack of all trades. And the funny thing is his name was Jack. Like he definitely instilled some like hardcore values in me that um, I think I took in a specific way that maybe he didn't mean for them to be taken, but like something he would always say to me is um, be a leader and not a follower. So for me, like I internalized that as like, if somebody, if a lot of people were like doing one thing, I would kind of like, what, what is the opposite of that? So like I zig when everybody zags. So like even through high school or like middle school, I was the only girl on the football team. And my dad like rooted for that and like had to like fight for it. And then in high school, I was uh, all through high school, I was on the wrestling team. He used to always say, um, can't sign in the English dictionary. And so I remember actually like fighting that in school one day with like one of my teachers was like, what's not in the English dictionary? I was very convicted. And uh, turns out she proved me very wrong when she, pro you know, and I came home and I was like, cause he used to always say, anytime I'd say, oh, I can't do that. He's like, no, that's not, can't doesn't exist. That's not like, not in the English dictionary. All right, so this is the Fab Lab, which was my original workshop um, that I started out with. It's an eight by 12 tough shed. 
and I did a total overhaul on it because I wanted it to match the garage. I wanted bright white. I wanted the lights. Um, but this is basically where all like the electronical stuff, uh, cutting utensils that are, I try to keep as clean as possible. So we have the CNC in here. I used to have a laser, but I just recently got a hookup where the laser now hooks onto the CNC. So it gives me a space saver. Uh, I have the Cricut, which is like a vinyl cutter over here. Yes, yeah, this is my, little, my other little fun, happy place that I like to come into and create and make fun things. Found these. This one, I, yeah, all three of them found these. But I've just been holding on to them. <laughs> uh, that Christmas when I was turning 21, he actually retrofitted, we have this little back house, he turned it into like a renter unit for me. So he surprises me and uh, there was like a sofa and there was a fireplace lit and the whole like, it was just, there was like already dishes. He had like a, like a housewarming plant and he had given me this ashtray that said, welcome to your new home and it had a key on it. That was what I opened. Then after my dad passed, obviously I was left with like an entire house, a full house, a rear unit, an entire lot. And then it became like, well now, now it's my turn to like, you know, put on my big girl pants and take over this property. And so here we are now. Those collections of things, I've actually like find, found ways to like honor him because for me, I'm like, I'm also a collector, but I feel like there's ways to like encapsulate it. My dad had this key collection that was so gnarly. It was it, it's kind of borderline obsessive where it's like, what were you gonna do with all those keys? And I genuinely still don't ever know what he was gonna do with them, but I made like so many fun projects with them. I made my countertop in the garage. I've made a table with them, I've made a couple different plaques. I found a fun, creative way to memorialize that and make it live on. greenhouse how does how does place in the on our property uh, so this section sits down about two and a half feet lower than what we connect to I actually had to dig all this out because when I got the greenhouse kit I didn't realize that it was gonna be higher than the roof and have enough slope so I had to excavate out a lot of dirt to get this to happen but uh, I'm a big plant nerd and actually I have people that um, give me plants as like rescue plants, like this Monstera. I had a friend that gave me, it literally only had uh, this one leaf on it when she gave it to me. And since having it, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven brand new huge leaves. Like it's, she's thriving. And we also raise koi fish and goldfish and our koi every now and then have babies. And so we've uh, been raising baby koi fish as well. And I grow tropical water lilies. Um, it's just fun because it's another form of experimenting, but um, like with greenery and like life form that you you don't know what's gonna the outcome of something. But it's like my this is my little happy place to come into when I'm not when I'm not working with my hands and actually making something and growing stuff. But so then after graduating FITM, it was my interior design degree. I didn't I realized I didn't really want to be an interior designer, but I still wanted to work with my hands. I wanted to like build with things, and I really loved working with wood. So that's where kind of wood brain came into, into play. Um, so I started working with wood veneers and I found a lot of different cabinetry makers that were basically cutting off scraps of veneers that were like really expensive wood veneers. Like we're talking zebra woods, um, ebony, and they were just gonna throw them away. So I started making flasks and lighters and cigar cases and um, hair clips and just any kind of like small tactile element that was usually a stainless steel element that I could buy and then add the wood veneer to. I actually even opened up a brick and mortar that I had down in San Pedro. And uh, I just kind of felt burnt out and I felt like I wanted, there was something different. I wanted to like try something more. So at the time I was working for Trader Joe's and I was a sign artist, which where you paint like murals and make the hand painted signs. Every morning we get in new fresh flowers, but we need to change out the water. So I've coined this, this phrase, water bowling, and see if I can get a strike by the cart tipping over and all the water buckets spilling out. Let's see what we can get. <gasps> oh my gosh, I got a strike. Uh, I had a, quite a few other friends that 
did YouTube and were doing it very successfully. I obviously saw how much work went into it. I saw that they were having sleepless nights. They were constantly like doing, edit, doing their own editing, but at the same token, they were they loved it. Like they were hungry for it. They got up super early in the morning to do it, to edit, to stay up, to, to shoot the content. Um, and I saw that it was like benefiting and paying off. And I knew it wasn't gonna be like a quick success for me, but I knew that if they had done it, it's the same thing. Like you see somebody else's doing it, like, well, I, I can do that too, but I can also do it in a different way. That was a total experiment. I have never done it that way. And it worked. I mean, I think. <laughs> so my YouTube channel is very different than I feel like, it is tutorial based, but like, I'm not gonna tell you, I just cut a two by four into six inches. No, you better just figure that out. Like I, I teach on my channel the way I would learn, which is like, okay, I saw what you just did there. My brain can click and it's like, I put two and two together. I don't need you to tell them it to me for 20 minutes. I need you to give it to me in 10 to 15 seconds. So for me, I'm very fast. Even as you can tell, I talk fast. I barely take like breaths in between. And I know that, and it's fun for my editing because sometimes even with my editing, I'm like, Lindsay, take a break, take a breath. People's attention span nowadays, it's shorter, right? And so like, if I'm gonna give you what value I feel like I have, which I feel like is a lot, I'm gonna give it quick and fast and I'm gonna tell it to you the way I wanna tell it to you. And if it, you know, I might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm definitely someone's glass of wine. And so that's just kinda how I treat it. My dad was like, you don't talk a lot, you just have a lot to say. Same thing, my brain, I'm like, yeah, I just got a lot to say. So from, and it was just like the gateway of like, cool, we could, you know, like it was just one person confirming and being like, you got it, you can talk as much as you want. You just have a lot to say. And I'm like, yeah. And that's just, so that's a lot of, my energy, my personality, um, and who I am. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Story of my life. But I don't go down. Oh, you little turkeys. Let's clean up this poop real quick before we, Jesus. Get turtles, they say. They'll be fun and clean, they say. I don't know if anybody says it, go on. I basically just make whatever kind of content that sparks my creativity. Sometimes it's functional, sometimes it's just crazy and I just feel like that's what needs to like happen and I need to create it and I have the tools to be able to do it, so why not? Um, I feel like YouTube is a lot of that, it's like taking chances and, and taking risks. I remember like kind of my first year starting out, I played it safe and I kind of was just doing stuff that like I thought was safe, but like this year I'm kind of just trying to like, in other words, I kind of want to break the internet. I want to do something that's like, whoa, what was that like, you know, like, or why did you do that? You know, like, I want to have some kind of questions behind it, but also kind of like intriguement, some fascination. I always kind of tell people when people are like, God, you have so much energy. I'm like, that's my superpower. I genuinely, when I wake up in the morning, I'm awake and I'm ready to go. And when I go, and I burn the, uh, all the way into the point where I pretty much can't anymore. If some, you know, and then when I, I have no trouble going to sleep, so then I'm asleep. I, I believe in the universe. The universe has always looked out for me. So like, there's just, uh, <laughs> Eric always thinks it's like a flirt with danger, I like cheat, but I'm like, these things always work out, but because I believe they're always gonna work out. And my, I remember my dad used to always being like, you're like an ostrich, you live with your head in a hole, like you don't even know what's going on in the world around you. And I'm like, but maybe I don't really need to. Like those things are obviously stressing you, weighing you down. But to me, I'm like so tunnel vision. I'm like, I'm walking on sunshine, whoa! And like, don't wanna feel good. And it just pays off. They let you just drive around this place and do whatever you really feel like, or at least that's my impression. I haven't ever had anyone tell me otherwise. You know, sometimes when I'm just feeling like I need a little leisurely drive, I just come drive through a uh, lumberyard. Maybe go pick up something, maybe we won't. Check out whatever they got new. Let's uh, buy some, buy some wood. I did a wood portrait of myself. Well, once again, kind of egotistical, but uh, it was hard. It was something I'd never seen done before. Marquetry with veneer is like a very common thing, but then it's again me. I'm like that rule breaker, want to zig instead of zag. So instead of cutting it out in full sheets, which I could have like a normal marquetry veneer inlaying, I chose to cut it up and like basically mosaic. I used like two different mediums, a mosaicing like process and then wood veneer to make a portrait. So I used five different woods, five different exotic woods to create a wood portrait. 
So that was kind of my first step out of making product because I uh, still had so much wood veneer. I was like, what am I gonna do with these wood veneers? My most recent thing that I'm like really proud of is I made a life-size wood brain. And I don't know why it took me so long to make a life-size wood brain. Recently made a epoxy skull to hold the wood brain, which to me like, I mean, it just took it to the next level. And so making a full-size, life-size epoxy skull to house a full life-size wood brain. I mean, obviously it's my most recent project, so I feel like I'm gonna be the most proud of that, but like that is definitely something I'm extremely proud of. I mean, obviously Eric's a huge factor in my life. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I married my best friend. He, I mean, he's always got my back and he's always supportive of when I, you know, make a decision of like to obviously take that leap of faith or whatever. If I question something, he's always my first in my court to be like, you got this, of course, why not? Why would you even question it? You go, you know, it explains multiple times I've done in the past. Yeah, that's right, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I definitely feel so extremely supported. Um, by my husband, which I love, my best friend. Close with my mom, I have that support, which has been great. Even though I wasn't raised by her, we still have such a great connection, and she, you know, she's young at heart, so I do feel I'm very supported, whether it's even from the maker community. Like, I never feel like I'm gonna fall on my feet. So yes, I feel very supported. But the maker community has definitely always been like very cool to me. I end up making, meeting one of my good buddies. It's, it's funny, I don't have any brothers or sisters, but I feel like he's the brother I knew I never wanted and never had, but kind of adopted. And I uh, met him at WorkbenchCon, uh, Craig from Barefoot Forge. And so then we started a podcast together. Uh, and then in that mix, we had a bunch of makers on and like the, the maker community, if you know it, and if you're a part of it, which I'm sure if you're watching this film, you are, you'd know that like, it's super inviting, it's super welcoming. We're definitely like this tribe of kind of like bandits of like wild, you know, wild ones, but then also like super like put together, but that's kind of what makes us so fun. Like when we put us all together, it's like a force to be reckoned with because it's like, then I feel like it's that same mentality of like, we know there's nothing we can't build and like they just feed off each other. And to me, like I like thrive off of that. It's like, that's where I do best. I, I just obviously, as you can tell, I love the maker community and I'm stoked to be a part of it. It's like a local little place in Torrance. It's called Rainforest Flora. Uh, it's a greenhouse where they, they actually provide, they're like one of the number one providers to like Home Depot and Lowe's for air plants. Um, it's, it's a huge structure, but they have this open area that you can walk through with waterfalls, fish, turtles, and you can buy air plants. Seeing how, how far I've come and what I've accomplished and the things that I've been able to create that like in my mind I like I saw it from blank in my mind and then was able to physically make it. To me, I'm like, that's motivational. And I'm motivated by that for me. And I, it's, to me, it's like a locomotive, right? Like if you keep that engine like constantly, like momentumly going, there's, it's like harder to slow it down rather than there's like the ups and valleys. Being that I, I worked for, like I said, Trader Joe's for 14 years and taking the leap, I actually didn't, like I said, plan on being there that long, but taking the leap and then like going out on a limb of, I, I said that I wanted to get paid to be myself. And I didn't really know what that looked like, but I knew that who I am, I felt like I wanted to get paid for my results, like who I am and the results of what I do because I feel like I have a lot to make results wise. my like content and like creating, that's like me leaving something behind. Like I wanna be able to be remembered for certain things and I want some of the arts and the things that I built and create not to just to just go to the waste. I want some value to come from, from it. And that to me is so fulfilling knowing that I created something of value that's now evergreen that'll be out there. Somebody like was able to take something from, away from or was you know, whatever that whatever that is. So right now I'm really proud of myself that I'm able to like, I get up and I'm so pumped, excited to like come into the garage. I stay out here way later than I would normally. Like it, 
because I'm so excited about whatever video or content I'm making or creation. It goes back to what I said is like, I know my hands can do anything. And when I put my brain and my hands together, like we're unstoppable. Cheers it up, friends. I want at least to be at 102. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. I, I'm okay with having like a walker because I know like obviously gravity and stuff and I need probably, because I'm a fast one. So I'm like, I'll be that on your left.